In this video, we're gonna tell you about the things that we loved and didn't about our stay at the Lopasan Coast of Avaro. And as some of you know, this is our fourth and final episode of our Lopasan series. So for those of you that watched the first three episodes, thank you. And for those of you who didn't, make sure to check out those episodes after this one. Now we stayed at the Lopasan in May of this year, and that was our second all-inclusive experience in the Dominican Republic and our fifth all-inclusive overall. So throughout this video, we will be comparing our experience at the Lopasan to those prior experiences. Yeah, and make sure you stick around to the end when we'll share some of our own personal tips on how to make the most out of your vacation at the Lopasan. And with that, should we start with the first thing that we loved? Let's do it. For me, I gotta start with the quality of the food. We did book the unique experience, which means we were able to eat at the unique beach buffet for breakfast and lunch. And that meant for lunch, we could eat scallops, filet mignon, sushi, lobster, lobster, and grilled octopus. So there were some really high-end items on that beach buffet. Yeah, the options at that buffet were amazing, but we did also eat at the buffets that everyone could eat at, the Goldfish Buffet on the beach, and also the Atlantico and the Cree Buffet. And they had some really good options as well. Sure, I did find some items there that I didn't particularly like, but overall, compared to the other resorts we've been to, I'd say the quality of those buffets was above average. I would agree, and we also have to mention, if you're not into buffets, there was also the American style bar that you could order food at, and YOLO, the fast food 24 seven place. The coffee shop too. Oh yeah, we had some really good sandwiches at the coffee shop. And I think I'll wrap up this food section by sharing one of my favorite things that I ate <laughs> at the resort, it was actually a pastry that you could get at any of the buffets. So I think we would have still really enjoyed our food experience, even if we didn't book any. I gotta say my favorite thing about the resort was just how not crowded it felt. Whether we were at the pools, the beaches, the bars, or the restaurants, we just always had plenty of room. And most importantly, we never had to play the towel game. Yeah, when we stayed at the Ambar last year, if we wanted to get a good spot on the beach, we had to get up before sunrise. Yeah, and at this resort, we could go out to the pool or the beach at one in the afternoon and still always find a pretty good spot. And there were even a couple times where we had pools all to ourselves and even bars to ourselves. Now, I do think a big part of the reason why it never felt busy was because it was only around 70% occupied from what we heard from the staff, but honestly, it felt like way less than that. But I think a bigger part of the reason is just that the resort is so huge and there's just so much room for everyone to spread out. Even if it was 100% occupied, I still don't think it would have felt too busy. Yeah, it didn't feel like it was near 70% full. All right, is it time for the first thing we didn't love about the Lopasan? I think so. All right, what you got? Well, since we were just talking about the pools and I was sharing some of our great experiences at the pools, there was one thing that I really didn't like about them. So they had these really gorgeous cabanas all over, but they cost between like 50 and $80 to rent per day. And even though we booked unique, that wasn't included at all. So there was all of these empty cabanas because I don't know, it didn't seem like many people were paying the upcharge to use them. They really were ridiculously expensive. And one time I just set my phone and my shirt by a cabana and I got scolded by one of the lifeguards. That did happen. Well, do you want to get your first dislike out of the way? I do. All right, what is it? So one of the biggest dislikes for me was the alcohol at the bars. Now, the quality of the alcohol was pretty good. They had a good selection of various types of liquor and a few types of beers to choose from. But my issue was that every single bar had the exact same choices. So for example, we went to the English pub and I was hoping they would have some English beers or maybe at least some different types of liquors but they had all the same liquors as every other bar and it felt really weird drinking a Mai Tai at an English pub. All the bars just kind of felt the same because all the drinks at every bar were the same. It was kind of funny when we went into the English pub and Skylar comes back with this pretty looking <laughs> each cocktail <laughs> but I also wanted to kind of compare to our experience at the Ambar last year because something that we really enjoyed there was that each of their dinner a la carte restaurants had like four or five specialty cocktails that you yeah. could choose from each night and it, those were only available at each of those restaurants so you kind of look forward to at least trying a new drink or two yeah every yeah night. it really <laughs> added to the dinner experience yeah. being able to try new drinks every night all right now that we got those out of the way should we get back to the things that we loved go ahead 
good. <laughs> All right, well, I have to talk about just how gorgeous the property was. They put in a lot of attention to detail when it comes to the landscaping, to the different themes. Each of the bars and restaurants had a different theme, and there really was just so much detail put into making those come to life. And thinking about like the courtyard area and the boulevard area, all the different palm trees were lit up in the evenings, and there was fountains all over. It was just really pretty. Yeah, the attention to detail was really evident throughout the property. And also the property just looked and felt really new. And I think it only is a couple years old, right? It yeah. finished construction, I think, right before COVID. And it really looked and felt brand new everywhere. So another thing I really loved about the Lopasan was the atmosphere. No matter where you were on the property, they generally had some really calm music playing. There were a couple hours a day where they played some more upbeat party type music at the main pool. And that was fine because you could always get away from that type of atmosphere if you wanted to, unlike our prior Dominican resort experience. <laughs> yeah, when we stayed at the Ambar, if you were at their pool, it was almost like a party was being forced upon you, <laughs> which if you were in the party mood, it was a lot of fun. But if you weren't, then you kind of had to go to a sister property to find that chill, relaxing vibe. So it was really nice that <laughs> we were able to find it at the Yeah, Lipson. it's <laughs> not good when you have to leave the property to find a relaxing pool experience and you definitely didn't have to do that here. All right, Jamie, you're up for another dislike. All right, well, I've got one, but it's a dislike and a like at the same time. So I want to talk about our experiences with the staff at the Lopezon. There were definitely some times when we kind of felt like staff were only there because they absolutely had to be. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. We definitely felt like they were ignoring us a little bit at some places. Just a few places, <laughs> but this is also a life because we had some really incredible experiences too. Like at the Unique Beach Club, all of the staff there were amazing. They really went above and beyond just to make sure we had a really good time during our stay. And I also have to mention our butler. So we got a butler with our unique room as well. Alexi, I think was his name. Yeah. And and we were able to communicate with him through WhatsApp and he was so responsive. So anytime we had a question or needed anything, he was there for us. So. And I gotta mention the bartenders at my favorite spot, the adults only bar, because not only did they make amazing drinks, but they were also just very friendly and very fun as well. So yeah, another thing I really loved about the Lopezan was that you could book different categories. And I think that just really allows you to book a personal experience that's best for your vacation based on your budget and also just the overall experience that you're looking for. Yeah, for example, for us on this trip, we did end up booking the most expensive type of room, which was the unique category of room. But that's because we were celebrating something really special. It was our 10 year anniversary and we were willing willing to pay a little bit extra to kind of have all those extra perks. And while we did think it was worth it, if we were going back and going there for a normal, normal vacation, vacation yeah. we might go for a less expensive option, but I'm yeah. sure we still would have a great time there. Oh, definitely. And if you do want to see the difference between the three different categories, we did actually make a video on that. We compared the different perks of each category as well as the price differences. So make sure to check out that video if you have already. So my next like has to do with the views on the property. Every day for breakfast and lunch, we were able to have our meal on the beach with a gorgeous view. Now I do want to clarify though that at least during our stay, only unique guests could have breakfast on the beach because the Goldfish Club only was open for lunch. True. We were so excited to get out of bed every morning to go have breakfast at the Unique Club because those views really were that amazing. Now we should mention that we understand and some people don't like eating out in the heat and would prefer to eat in cool AC. And those people can eat at the main buffet. But for us, it was well worth it to endure the Puna kind of heat to have those views. Another thing that we didn't love about the Lopasan, at least compared to some of the other all-inclusives that we stayed at, was the view from the a la carte restaurants. Now the food at those restaurants was amazing and we really loved the ambiance, but we didn't love that none of the restaurants were actually located on the beach. 
Yeah, when compared to some of the other resorts that we've stayed at, we kind of missed that experience at the Lopezon because none of the a la carte restaurants are actually on the beach where you can get the waves. Yeah, so although we didn't get that beachfront dinner experience, we still did really enjoy our dinners at the Lopezon. And that actually leads to my next like, which is how easy it was to book the a la carte restaurants at the Lopezon. So about a week before our arrival, we received a website link that we could click on and make our reservations. And we were able to make all but one night of reservations at the a la carte restaurant before we got there. On the day that we arrived, we were able to secure that last one that we weren't able to book online. Yeah, and that was so much better than our last all-inclusive experience at the Am Bar. Now, that one, we're supposed to be able to book all of your restaurants through the app a week before your arrival. But the app wasn't working, so we actually had to call the resort to ask them to make our reservations and they basically told us that we may or may not get the reservations that we asked for. So once we showed up to the resort we didn't even have a reservation for our very first night and we had to eat at the sports bar. So I think at this point we have one like and one dislike left before we get to our tips. Yeah we better do the dislike first. <laughs> So the dislike has to do with our room and there was actually two things but they were both pretty minor. Yeah and the first one is kind of funny. So because we booked a unique room it came with an espresso machine. We were really excited to use it. It came with these cute little cups that you put in the Nespresso machine. But we quickly found out that the cups that they gave us were too small. So. <laughs> Every time we wanted to make an espresso, it would overflow. So we would have to pull out this little cup and it would put the extra coffee in the cashman area and then we had to clean it up. We made a mess the first time because we had no idea. And the other thing for me was the temperature of the refrigerator. Now, I understand there's a lot of Europeans at this resort and they like their beers a little bit warmer, but I like my beers ice cold and I actually had to order ice from room service every day to keep my beers at an acceptable drinking temperature. And the last thing that we loved about our stay at the Lopezon were the amenities that were available to guests who arrived before their check-in time or guests that stayed after their check-out time. So if you arrive early or stay late, there are facilities underneath the lobby that you can use that have showers, places to change, and there's also a place to store your luggage securely too, even when you're not checked into a room. Now fortunately for us, even though we arrived at the Lopezon early, our room was ready. But we did use that secure bag storage area after we checked out because we had a late flight that didn't depart for a few hours after our checkout time. So it was really nice to be able to continue to enjoy the resort until we got picked up by our ride to the airport. Now, as promised, we are going to share some of our tips for making the most of your Lopez on vacation. And while we do that, we're going to leave you with some of our favorite footage from our stay. Our first tip is to attempt to speak some Spanish. Now we aren't telling you non-Spanish speakers to become fluent in a new language for your next Lopezon trip, but from our own research and personal experience, learning just a few key Spanish phrases can go a long way, as many of the staff seemed much more happy to serve us and to communicate with us in English when we at least made an attempt to communicate in Spanish. Our second tip is to bring small bills to tip the staff. While tipping at the Lopezon is never mandatory, it is common for guests to tip, and the front desk staff are able to provide change in both American dollars and Dominican pesos. That said, we found that the front desk often had a limited amount of small bills and at times to be unable to break down our larger ones. So if you'd like to be able to tip the staff a few dollars here and there, we'd suggest bringing your small bills onto the resort with you. Our third tip is beware of the sargassum. If you've read many reviews from guests who've recently stayed in Punakana, you've probably heard mention of sargassum, a large brown seaweed that originates in the Atlantic Ocean. And while the seaweed occurs naturally, the amounts washing up on Caribbean shores has increased significantly over the past several years, especially during the summertime. During our stay, there was very little sargassum on the beach until our final day, when we woke up to find the shoreline covered with mounds of the unsightly seaweed and workers struggling to keep up with its removal. So if you're someone who enjoys spending lots of time relaxing in the ocean or lying on the beach, sargassum should definitely be on your radar. And we'd recommend monitoring sargassum levels in the Punakana area via the website above. Our fourth tip is be prepared to walk. 
As we touched on earlier in this video, the Lopasan Costa Bavaro is a massive resort and guests will cover nearly half a mile walking from one end of the resort to the other. Due to the size of the sprawling property, we were a bit surprised that we did not see any golf carts transporting people around like we often have on other all-inclusive resorts. As we enjoyed the long walks on the property, this lack of transportation did not make our list of dislikes. But if you have limited mobility or just prefer to avoid walking while on vacation, we'd recommend considering another resort for your Punakana stay. Our fifth tip is do your own research. As much as we hope this video and our entire Lopasan series will help you decide if the Lopasan is the right vacation spot for you, our video should only be a part of your decision-making process. There are thousands of reviews out there on Google and TripAdvisor that can provide you with additional information on the property. We highly recommend reading those reviews, especially from vacationers who have stayed at the resort during the same time of year that you'll be visiting, and those who have stayed in the same category of room in which you would plan to stay. If you've watched all four videos from our Lopasan series and still have questions about this resort, please feel free to ask us in the comments. And if you haven't seen the full series, check it out by clicking here right now. Thanks for watching.